Hey guys, Ray here, welcome to the channel. So today I am looking at my home furnace here and I am going to add a outlet to it so I can literally plug my furnace into a portable power station or a portable gas generator so I can have the ability to keep my house warm during the winter months if say a winter storm blows in and my power goes out. I don't want my pipes to freeze in my house, but this is a fairly easy uh, modification that provides a lot of value. So uh, let's jump right into it. Okay, so this is probably something you're definitely gonna wanna do before the winter storm comes along. Basically, if you're like me, you have this outlet on the side of your furnace here. Sometimes there's a little fuse box if you have like one of those older furnaces. But before I remove this, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off power to the furnace. I just turned the furnace breaker off, so I should not have power there. After I take this faceplate off, I am gonna double check that the power is off just in case that breaker was mislabeled. Okay, I have confirmed that power is off. Now I do like wearing these rubber gloves, even though they are not meant to protect you against getting shocked. It makes me feel a little more comfortable than just touching wires with my bare hands. Okay, for the parts list, basically you're gonna need one of these little pigtails. Now you can buy these rated for 15 or 20 amps. Uh, most uh, furnaces, I think they're like 15 amps. Um, this one only uses poles, only I think six amps. And then the next thing you're gonna want is because I'm in the basement here, code requires this to be on a GFCI outlet. Now I have an older house and it was not on a GFCI, GFCI outlet. So this is gonna add some extra safety for me. Now I have this little notch here that means it is a 20 amp GFCI outlet. And that just matches my 20 amp breaker upstairs. The other thing I'm gonna use is these little uh, clamp connectors here. Okay, now that I have my outlet removed, I have a white wire, a black wire, and a bare copper wire. This is where the power is gonna come from the city, the grid, and that is going to wire and power this outlet here. This outlet's gonna sit in this box. Now, these wires that go to my uh, furnace, this is where the furnace is gonna receive its power from. So I'm gonna wire these top wire wires into this outlet and these bottom wires are going to be tied directly onto the furnace so my green is going to go to my ground my black is going to go to my black and my white is going to go to my white so these are going to be totally separate systems this um, furnace is going to be just like you know a toaster oven where it has its own separate plug and you can plug it into an outlet and so this is where the outlet's gonna be and I'm gonna have my plug coming out through this hole here. I'm lucky my furnace already has one of these holes drilled, but you can you get one of these uh, step drill bits. I picked this up at Harbor Freight and you can drill a hole in the side of the furnace here. Now let's go ahead and uh, wire the plug in first. This is where the wires come through. So I am just going to push these, these bottom three wires through this hole here. So they come out the back. And then I'm going to feed my pigtail plug into my furnace to connect onto those wires. Now I am going to add this wire clamp to protect the wires from the sharp edge of the furnace. So I trim these wires back a little bit and I'm just going to pull them and I'm going to feed them right through this hole with the other wires so they all come into this box. Yeah, I'm just gonna clean these up and now really I just need to connect the greens together, the whites together, and then also the blacks together. Now I could use wire nuts for this, but I've had some wire nuts come off at different locations in my house. So I'm gonna start switching over to use these uh, Wago connectors. They're really easy. Just uh, flip these tabs up and then you can slide the wire in and you can see where it seats and then you clamp, clamp it down there, and then I can get the, my other black. Make sure it's seated really well, and then I can just clamp it down. I can tug on it, make sure it's tight, and that looks good. Now I'll put a link to a, like a variety pack of these for different sizes in the description of this video as well.
Okay, now everything's connected. Now all I need to do is fold these in and put this cap on. So I'll just tighten this cord down. I think that should be enough length to connect it to a power station. So I'll just tighten this down, not too tight, but just enough to hold it in place if, I, if it gets tugged on. But yeah, this plug is all ready. I don't even need to wire this plug up because this is just coming, this is just a regular wall outlet. But I could plug this into my power station and I could run my house just like this if I wanted. Now my thermostat is coming down here and it is receiving power from this plug as well. So this will run my furnace and my thermostat. But before we plug this into my power station and try it out, let's just wire up this outlet real quick. Okay, this GFCI outlet is pretty easy to wire. On one side of my outlet, I have this silver or chrome screw, and that's gonna connect to my white wire, my neutral. And then on the other side, I have this brass screw, and that's where I'm gonna connect my black wire. Now I do have this ground, bare ground wire, and it's kind of short, so I'm just gonna use another Wago connector to kind of just extend this. And then on the ground, I can connect to the green screw underneath the outlet. Now if you want to add GFCI protection to additional outlets after this outlet, there are some additional screws they are hiding underneath that yellow tape there, and you can connect additional outlets if you'd like. Now I almost forgot, I do like adding electrical tape to my outlet just to make sure any of those exposed uh, metal screws or wires don't connect with anything inside that box once everything is pushed in. Now be sure to make sure everything's tight and that you follow the instructions on your specific outlet that you purchase. Okay, so it is all ready to go. So I haven't turned on power yet, so this outlet does not have power, but let's go ahead and plug this into my power station and see if we can get it working. Okay, just because we have this plug wired up and we have a generator does not necessarily mean it will run. So a lot of these furnaces are super picky about what type of power they accept. So one thing that's common is these the circuitry in this furnace will look for a ground neutral bond. So if you have a floating generator or power station that doesn't have the ground neutral bond, it won't work. So what I'm going to do here is you can buy this uh, bonding plug. Or uh, in emergency, you can kind of make your own like I did. It literally connects the uh, ground and the neutral together. So here I have this testing outlet. And once I plug this in, the light will go on. It's showing that this power station is now bonded. And then I should be able to just plug my furnace in here. Okay, let me turn it on to heat here. Yeah, the furnace has been off for a while because I've been wiring this up. Let's see. Okay, looks like it's running. Looks like this furnace is using about 600 watts. This furnace was installed to run a 3,000 square foot house. So I just turned power on to this outlet. So under normal operating conditions, I can just run my furnace off my off the grid power here. So now I also have GFI protection. And if, I know these furnaces are really expensive, so now that I can even add a surge protector to protect my furnace against any surges, so that's even an additional benefit to adding this. Really cool. So if you think this video will benefit anyone, go ahead and share it with them. That'll help the channel out. So if, you, if, so if you've wired this up and you still are having problems running your furnace, off of a generator. I have another video where I go through five troubleshooting steps I'll put here. And if you want to see any other videos from my YouTube channel, uh, I'll put a link to another video that YouTube thinks you will like here. Thanks a lot for watching guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.